Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 26 and I'll be reading verses 26 through 35. And this is what it says. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing he broke it and gave it to his, the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is to be shed on behalf of many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the, this fruit of the vine and from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter answered and said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night before a cock crows, you shall deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing too. Pray with me. Lord, we always need your strength. We always need your guidance. Lord, give us ears that, that hear and, and feet that follow this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was about 114 years ago I became pastor of my first church. I was a student and, and there were other students that the Methodist Church grouped all together to have what was called teaching parish. We had a supervisor that would help us out because, boy, we knew we needed it. Uh, the supervisor helped us out as we came together once a month for several hours with preaching, with pastoral care, with administrative kinds of things that were needed in, in our churches. And a lot of what we did was we'd come together and we'd share victories and also show each other our bruises. And uh, I remember one fellow in particular. Uh, <laughs> this Monday where we came together, his, his eyes were like saucers. And he said, you won't believe what happened to me yesterday. And I said, what was that? He said, I was preaching in the middle of my sermon when the back door of the church opened up. And this fellow came walking down the aisle with a shotgun. He said... He stopped about halfway down the aisle, and I could just smell the, the liquor on his breath just pouring off of him. He said, he looked at me, and he said, are you Joseph Lane's grandson? And I looked at him, and I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, that's all I wanted to know. He walked down the aisle, and he put a dollar in the offering plate, and then he turned around and walked out. <laughs> well, you know, that day they weren't talking about the sermon. <laughs> yeah, no, that day they were talking about the offering. They were talking about the fellow who came in and put a dollar bill in the offering plate. You never do know what people are going to walk away with 
after, after you have a service, after you come together, you never do know what people are going to walk away remembering. You never do know what people are going to walk away holding on to. There's a service going on right here that I read this morning. It's the service of the Passover. It's the celebration of the Passover. This time every year, Jews would come from all over the world. They would come together in groups. And they would celebrate what God did in setting them free from slavery to Pharaoh in Egypt and how he led them through the, through the wilderness to life in the promised land. This is that night. And they had different symbols that they would use to remember. They would, would eat the bitter herbs to remember the bitterness of slavery. And they would tell the story. And they still do that on the, the Passover night. And they would share together the Passover meal. But Jesus added something to that Passover meal. He added a cup and he added a loaf of bread. He was telling his disciples that it wasn't the blood of a, of a lamb sacrificed for them that, that led them from slavery to the promised land that it was his body and his blood poured out for them on the cross that would lead them not from slavery to Pharaoh but from slavery to sin through the wilderness of this life to new life abundant life eternal life and and while he's telling this story Yes, the, the, the gospel writers are remembering it. They're hanging on to it. But Matthew and Mark, both especially, remember how, how he ended the service. Matthew says, and after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Mark remembers the same thing, that afterwards they sang a hymn. They sang a hymn. Well, what what song do you sing on the last night of your life? Knowing that this is the end, what, what song do you sing? What song do you sing knowing that you're being betrayed? What song do you sing when you know, when you know those that you're closest to are going to deny even knowing you? Not just one or two, all of them. What song do you sing? Well, we know the answer to that. At the end of the Passover, now and, and 2,000 years ago, they sang the great Halil. It was from the, the Jewish hymn book, the Old Testament, the Psalms. That's their hymn book, and they sang Psalm 136, the great Halil. And it starts this way, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. What song do you sing? Well, the song Jesus sang was a song of thanks. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. The first thing that I want to talk about, what do you sing? What do you sing? Will you sing thanks? Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Howard Rutledge tells a story about a time in his life where he thought he'd left the faith of his childhood behind. But he was captured by the Vietnamese during the the Vietnam War, and he was thrown into a, constant, into a prisoner of war camp. There he was beaten. There he was, he was tortured. And he said the only thing that kept him alive was that faith, that faith of his childhood. It was the scripture. It was the hymns. It was the giving of thanks to God. And he went on to say, the enemy knew that the best way to break a man's resistance was to crush his spirit in a lonely cell. All this talk of scripture and hymns may seem boring to some, but it was the way we conquered our enemy and overcame the power of death around us. Well, that's not just true long ago. It's true today. The way that that, that we conquer death. The way that leads us through is a, is, a, is a heart of thanks. That it was Paul, the Apostle Paul, who knew what it was to suffer. 
The Apostle Paul knew what heartache was. Paul knew what it was to be beaten with whips, to be beaten with rods. He knew what it was to be imprisoned. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Not for everything give thanks, but in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know of any other place where the will of God is stated so plainly as it is right there. And it's what Jesus practiced. Even the last night of his life, here on this earth, even knowing that he was going to be betrayed, even knowing that he was going to be denied, even knowing that his his suffering, his suffering was but hours away. Sing thanks. It takes practice. It takes practice. And I believe that's exactly what Matthew is calling us to. I believe that's exactly what Jesus is calling us to. It's exactly what Scripture is calling us to. To sing thanks. But the second thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is not only singing of thanks, but the great Hillel, this song that they sang at the end of the Passover, Psalm 136, it says in its first verse, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. But in its last verse, it says, give thanks to the God of heaven for his love continues forever. That's in verse 27. That, that little verse is that his, his love continues forever. That verse right there in 27 verses is, re- is repeated 27 times. His love continues forever. Sometimes I'll hear folks say, well, I don't like this new music so much. It just repeats the same thing again and again and again and again. Well, if you don't like the new music, because, and that's your criteria, my hunch is you won't like the old music either because Psalm 136 is old music. And 27 times it says again and again. 27 times in 27 verses, his love continues forever. And this is the song Jesus sang on the last night of his earthly life. The love of God, he sang, knowing that he was being betrayed. The love of God is the song he sang when he knew that those he was closest to were going to betray him. Theologian Dr. Carl Michelson Michelson tells a story, or told a story, about a time that he was wrestling with his son on his front lawn. They were tussling around, play, playing, and accidentally, Dr. Michelson accidentally struck his son in the cheek with the full force of his elbow. He knew it must have hurt, and his, his boy was stunned by it, but his father looked at him straight in the eye, and when his father, when the son saw in his father's eyes love and concern, rather than bursting into tears, he burst into laughter. And it's what's in the Father's eyes that makes all the difference. It's what's in the Father's eyes that, that makes all the difference. It's why Jesus came so, so you and I would know what's in the Father's eyes. It's a love that's, that's even greater than our, our greatest imagination. It's a love that is shown by the way Jesus lived here in this life. A life of healing, a life of forgiveness. A life of sacrifice on the cross to forgive your sins and mine. So often today, people get caught up in their own hurt, in their own suffering. Maybe something that happened a long time ago, and at best, in God's eyes, at best they see a God that's distant and uncaring. And at worst, a God that's angry and vengeful. And trying to imagine the love of God, when we start with ourselves, it's beyond our imagination. But this is what 1 John 4.10 says. This is what real love is. It is not our love for God, it is God's love for us in sending His Son to be the way to take away our sins. 
That's what Jesus did on the cross for you and for me. And seeing that love, it requires practice. It requires practice. It's what Jesus did there on the last night of his earthly life. It's what Jesus did when he knew that he was being betrayed. It's exactly what Jesus did when he knew. He knew that those that he was closest to were going to deny him. He sang of the Father's love. And in his eyes is a love for you and for me. And it's worth singing about. It's worth remembering. Sing about his love. Sing about, sing a song of thanks. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is sing about his guidance. That in the great Halil, Yes, it starts with thanks and it ends with thanks. And that all through 27 times it talks about his love that's everlasting. But the great Halil also, over half of it, talks about the guidance of God. Through the time of slavery with Pharaoh, through the promised land, through the, the wilderness and into the promised land. That it's a song of his guidance. And there at the Passover, they sing a song to remember the guidance of God. And it's worth singing for you and and me as well. Dr. Dennis Rainey is an author. Taught a Sunday school class of sixth graders. And every year he would do one lesson that was the same. He'd break those sixth graders into three different groups. And in each of the groups he would say one rule. No talking. And then he would take... A jigsaw puzzle. To the first group, he would, he would pour out the puzzle in front of them and he would give them the box to look at. And immediately they would start the puzzle and begin matching up the pieces to the, to the image that was there on the box. To the second group, he'd pour out the puzzle, thinking that they had the same puzzle and the same box. There was something they didn't know. That the picture on the box didn't match the puzzle at all. And to the third group, he would pour out the pieces of the puzzle and not give them any box at all. Well, that third group soon became disinterested and defeated, and they would just stare off into space, being bored. The second group, well, they would become frustrated and find that they couldn't talk and and didn't understand why the pictures didn't match, and pretty soon when they did understand that the picture didn't match the box, they'd toss the box. And that first group, they'd be about their way matching the puzzle to the box. Well, he goes on to say, he wasn't just being a, a, a mean Sunday school teacher. Did he go on to say the lesson that day was that life is like pieces of a puzzle, whether it's marriage, whether it's relationships, whether it's the hard times or whether it's the joy, that, that we need help putting the pieces together. We need help bringing order out of the chaos. And the good news is that Jesus doesn't leave us alone. The good news is that when Jesus rose from the grave, it was so his Holy Spirit could guide us in the here and now. So his Spirit could give us leading through Scripture, through worship, through prayer, through the, through the sacraments. A few weeks ago, Early one morning, I began to pray. And a strange thing happened. A name came to mind. And it was a name I hadn't thought about in a, a lot of years. It was a fellow I knew back in college. We'd had a class or two together. But total time of the two of us speaking together was maybe 10 minutes. And I hadn't seen him, I hadn't talked to him in 35 years. But I sensed God was nudging me, urging me to pray for him. And a strange thing happened that as I began to pray for him, the the prayer began to develop. At the end of my prayer time, I I had remembered College Bulletin had talked about that he'd been transferred to another job. It was years before, but I I looked up where he 
he was working, and sure enough, I was able to find his email address. I wasn't real sure whether he would receive it or not, or maybe an administrative assistant might read it and think, well, here's one weird dude sending him an email. But I wrote him a short little email, said I felt led to pray for you this morning. I hope all is well. At the end of the day, I received an email back. He said that he had flown to Florida to engage in some difficult conversations that morning. And he said as the morning progressed that the conversations were easier than he could ever have imagined. And he said he knew someone must be praying for him. He went on to say when he returned to his room and opened up his email that the first one he read was my email that I'd been praying for him. And we both celebrated. We both celebrated what God had done. Now, was it coincidence? Well, for those who don't believe, no explanation is possible. But for those who do, no explanation is necessary. That's the way the Holy Spirit does things. In nudges, in leading, in helps, in guiding. Every day. Every day. In the joy and in the sorrow. Every day in the life and in the relationships. But it takes practice. Practicing His presence. It's what Jesus did and it's, it's, it's what we're called to do this day. It might be in the, the coming together and singing. It might be in the coming together in Scripture. Coming together in worship. It might be in prayer. It might be in the sacraments. That there are all ways that God speaks to us. Not just a long time ago, but today. Now this morning it may be that you've never invited the Holy Spirit to lead, to nudge, to guide you. And you're in that place where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's what's lacking. I want to pray with you this morning. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, it's in, the, it's in the singing. In the singing of, of your guidance, of remembering the way you nudge us, the way that you, you lead us in the prayer, in the worship, in the Scripture, in the sacraments. Lord, I ask that you, you lead us again this day in the joy, in the, in the heartache. That we might know we're not alone. That when you rose from the grave, you rose. That, that your guidance, your strength, that you might renew us, make us into a new creation. One day at a time, one step at a time through this wilderness we call life. We need your help. Lord, it also may be that, that this day that we have not been singing about your love. We've not been, been noticing your presence and your love. That in your eyes we've seen unconcern or detachment. Or maybe at worse, anger and vengeance. And this day you gave us a nudge. This day, this day you led us to look to Jesus and, and to see the way that he loved. And there's new life that's been born. And, and some of those folks this day that are, that are listening right now, I ask that, that that love grow this day. Yes, through the reading of Scripture and yes, through remembering your love for us. Yes, in prayer. And yes, in the singing. Lord, often it is these days what's easiest to sing is not thanks. 
what's easiest to sing is whatever comes across our path. And it's easy to grumble. But there's no life in it. Help us to practice. Practice in the singing of thanks. This day and in these days to come. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.